In today's video, we're going to go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. UFOs are real and aliens are real, but they're not from outer space. And that's according to the top two UFO researchers after decades long research. So go to sabrell.com and so where do they it's think up they're there from if they're not from outer space? They're interdimensional and potentially fallen angels disguising themselves because they're liars. Of of something, like you said, can't be proven or disproven. I'm from this galaxy yeah. 300 light years away. <laughs> this is kind of what Tucker Carlson thinks. He, I, he I, thinks I, there's I, a spiritual element to it, and he thinks they've always been here, and he thinks that this is what's kind of documented in the Bible is like good and evil. And that's it, exactly. And... I mean, that's what's going on. I mean, the top two UFO researchers said UFOs are real, number one. Number two, they're not from outer space. And number three, they're demonic. And that's what I talk about, the where it talks about fallen angels interbreeding with humans, as talked about in Genesis 6, and creating a race called Nephilim, who were men of renown, world leaders. Could you? I've been catching a few clips of this podcast every once in a while. It's pretty good, and I got a couple of the clips of this podcast, but I have to separate them because YouTube really likes to take them down for some reason. And a lot of you guys in my comments talk about what this guy talks about all the time, so it's pretty interesting stuff. I think you guys will enjoy it, but you probably have already seen it. Fuck is that? What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Where did it go? Oh, there. Yo. What the actual fuck is that? What the fuck is that? I don't know. It was pretty blurry and it was really hard to tell. It did have a Tic Tac UFO shape to it, but it it was really low to the ground. But again, it was super blurry. It was really hard to tell what it was. Could have been a drone. It could have been a close shot of a plane just reflecting really hard off the sun. Not 100% sure what it is. Leave a comment down below on what you guys think it was. I'm thinking maybe a drone. No! I feel like they're At first I was watching it and I'm like, eh, that kind of looks like flares falling apart. And then they actually started moving in a pattern and I'm like, okay, well maybe it's a drone. But then I'm starting to read the comments and a lot of the comments are saying that these are people doing nighttime skydiving and that these are just the lights that we're seeing from the skydive event. So that could be what it is. And actually that's a really good point. I have not thought about that on a lot of these topics. Like if you ever see a UFO in the sky, it could potentially be someone skydiving. In this case, these people were using lights at night. Oh my God. Right there, right there. Woo! Jeez, please. Oh my gosh. Right there. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Where do you go? Yeah. Ah, don't make it. Nope, nope, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just pass. Now look at that. Oh, sheesh. Oh my gosh. No, 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 no. Man, I hope the best for everyone that goes through these tornadoes that's been happening. 
I know there's been a lot of really harsh, devastating tornadoes that's touched down recently, and I'm so sorry for everyone that has to go through that because that's a horrible event. In this case, this guy's like a tornado whisperer. He was just telling them to go and it was moving along. We need more people like him to be able to control these things because that's terrifying. It almost looks like a creature reaching its way down to ground in a... I don't know, I don't like that. The internet doesn't even exist. This video you're watching right now isn't real. The people you're interacting with in the comments don't exist. The people that like your videos, watch your videos, are all fake. Dead internet theory is real, and here is the proof. The dead internet theory is the theory that the internet is not even real anymore. Yes, it did used to be. Everybody that you interact with on social media did used to be real. It used to be a genuine thing. But it died, completely died, back in 2017 or 2018. Meaning everything you see now, everybody you interact with, is fake. So what actually does this mean? So let's use Facebook as a key example right now because there's nuts stuff going on right there. There are these weird AI generated images going completely viral for no reason. Now if you look at these photos, as I say, getting loads of views, loads of likes, there's all strange people in the comments, which there is no way these people are real. Like the comments, the things people are saying are just completely random, nothing to do with what is actually going on in the photo or video. Like you've got Taylor Swift riding on a tortoise, like what's going on? Why would somebody comment, oh my god, amen? Makes no flipping sense, right? So we know all these posts are just general AI, but so are the people seeing it. So there is of course millions and millions of users on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all the social platforms, but it's actually not. You see, the dead internet theory suggests that these are actually all bots. And now, yes, of course there is still people on social media, but nowhere near the amounts we're being told. Billions of users on TikTok, really? Random videos blowing up, sometimes you'll get loads of likes, loads of views, but people don't really comment all the time. That's because these people aren't actually real. Do you remember the .io games? You've got Slither.io and all of these games where you'd play against people online. Now these games you'd play against people on your phone or on your device, and it'd be like you're playing against real people, right? Because you were, you could interact, you could chat with them or whatever. But no, it's actually official that .io games, you weren't ever playing against anyone unless it was local multiplayer. And it went so far, they wanted you to believe so badly that you were playing against online real people, that, you know, if you went on aeroplane mode or your Wi-Fi went off, it would go, oh, searching for connection, we can't play, there's no connection. But they weren't real. We know that was all bots. So why couldn't you play it offline? Because they wanted us to believe that. So what if the big companies, all of these mobile app companies, technology companies, they want us to think there's billions of people on the platforms interacting with our staff, making us go viral, but it's not really happening. So half the people that probably watch this video won't even be real. Half the people of videos you interact with might not be real. There are millions and millions and billions of bots creating accounts, creating content all over the platforms. These faceless channels, there might not be anyone behind them. So that's why... I've heard of the dead internet theory before. I'm not necessarily a believer in it. Not to say that there is not a lot of bots out there. Trust me, there is. And sometimes it just makes me wonder if it's rogue AI that just went on and created a life of its own and it's just out there enjoying itself. That's kind of funny, but most of the time it's just fake accounts to help stimulate a channel or a video to make it get more views or seem like it's getting more views. But to say that it's a dead internet theory and everybody that's on the internet is not real is kind of crazy because like you're watching my video and I'm real. Or am I? This is why you shouldn't trust dolls. <laughs> a mother by the name Haley Moore enjoyed collecting a series of realistic looking dolls as a hobby. And after giving one of the dolls to her daughter, it's late at night when suddenly she hears her daughter screaming for help. What the cameras capture is horrifying. <laughs>
Her daughter can be seen playing with her toys as a toy seemingly lures her, then something pulls her under the bed. Immediately after discovering this, Haley moved her daughter to another room and kept that room locked. I found out that people that have lived here have had some ghostly encounters. It was built near, not on, but near a cemetery. But after many comments begging her to look under the bed, she does so and captures this. Oh my God. The doll she was playing with can be seen moving on its own. <gasps> that doll is plastic. That doll is stuffed. There is no way that thing should have moved like that. What exactly pulled Haley underneath her bed? Paranormal or not, I'll let you decide. I thought there was going to be like a serious jump scare when she was looking under the bed. But it was just that doll that looked like it was moving, which that looked like a real child to me. That did not look like a doll. What do you guys think? Do you think this is a real video? If not, let me know why. And also, if you have the proof as to how this video is fake, leave a comment down below letting me know because I would be very curious. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this every day. And to everyone that's subscribed, thank you so much for being subscribed to the channel. And to everyone that's not subscribed, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. And don't forget, if you want to be a part of Questions for DK where I answer personal questions, questions about conspiracy theories, or theories in general, Leave a comment starting with question for DK so I'll be able to find them through the YouTube search results and answer those questions in a future video. This woman was just out exploring the woods. She came up on an abandoned shack cabin and was just recording it just for exploration. But she doesn't realize there's something on the side of that cabin that's watching her and you see it move. The question though is, what was it? It looks humanoid but not. Take a look at this and tell me what you think it could be. This one, I have a feeling, is more or less a staged hoax. If not, it was a creature, like a bear or something, because that looked like a bear at first. But I really don't know what this could have been. It's, it's really round, whatever it is. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. There being a secret government program, it was called Project Sign. And Project Sign is like what we know it as. But back in the day, everybody working on it, like this, the small group of scientists and people that were working on this, it was actually among them, Project Saucer. But just out to the public, like later on, they were like, we call it, it was like it's Project Sign. So it started off as Project Sign, which was AKA Project Saucer. Then it turned to Project Grudge. And then it turned to Project Blue Book. Okay, if you can see floaters or have floaters in your eyes, there's a theory that these are actual interdimensional beings that you might be able to communicate with. Watch this. I Disclaimer, I'm not saying I'm 
100% believing in this. I read about it and I'm going to experiment with it and I will report back. But here's the theory. So there's this book that you can Google called Spiritual Dimensions of Eye Floaters. In it, it talks about how doctors say that eye floaters are just harmless little things that you should not pay attention to. The guy in the book says otherwise. He says that these floaters are the first appearance of luminous spheres, which he calls the light of consciousness. He talks about if you concentrate on these floaters, they can provide an exit from earthly existence, and you can also communicate with yourself or other consciousnesses with these floaters. Now, I actually have heard about this in mythology, as well as certain inventors and very smart people in history communicating with these things, which turn into uh, radiant matter or luminous lights in front of them, which have a certain intelligence. So there could be something to this. I don't want this to take over my life, and I don't suggest you let that happen either. But I think it's something to be said for at least looking into it, so if you have a floater, maybe try to focus on it and see if it starts to materialize into anything or see if you can get any messages from it. Why not? Let me know in the comments if this has happened to you, if you see floaters, if you've communi had any communication with these floaters, if they turn into shining lights for you. This has not happened for me yet, but I haven't really tried either because I have to also live a normal life and I'm doing a million things. <laughs> But I do want to try it. Pretty interesting theory. I've never heard it before. This is a new one to me. I do have eye floaties. I can definitely see them. There's some that look like little bacteria floating around. Some of them are black. Some of them are clear, kind of. I don't know if I can communicate to them or anything. I've never thought about that. But that's that's a pretty interesting one. How about any of you guys? Do you have eye floaties or do you not even know what we're talking about? Don't you think it's so fucking crazy? how we all live in like different realities and different dimensions right now. Like, you know, before the awakening, right? Before I started doing a deep dive into myself, before I started waking up to the fucking illusions of this goddamn reality that we've been enslaved in for so long, I was just like fucking everybody else, you know? We were all in the same place together. And now even scrolling through TikTok, I'm literally like, what the fuck? I live in a whole whole different dimension reality than other people do like we're not all on the same fucking playing field and i don't mean this in like i'm better or worse it's like it's just wild to see where some people are other people are and then other people are you know what i'm saying it is crazy like we are literally in a spiritual warfare right now like literally the great awakening like souls waking up and like and then there are other people just like partying and like caring about just like all the shit like superficial shit and i'm not saying anything's wrong or bad or worse or good i'm just saying what the fuck it bugs me out sometimes I'm like bro this is like it's, it's such a wild gnarly experience to experience to see where other people are in just different dimensions and realities like and the more you awaken the more you see the more you can't believe that other people can't see and i get it like not everyone is meant to awaken not everyone is meant to go through this journey but for the ones that are dude we need to talk about this shit because it there are times where it's like okay it is i get like and there are other times where i'm like whoa the shit bugs me out. Are you the same? So the red heifers have been sacrificed. They were sacrificed this last Wednesday, April 24th at 9 a.m. According to this guy, I have nothing to do with it. I have nothing to add to this. I am just reporting on a, a video that was sent to me that's already been sent, seen by like hundreds of thousands of people. So you may have already seen this video. Well, Alan, why is he saying this? What kind of information does he have that would lead him to believe that the red heifers have actually been sacrificed? I'm glad I've asked myself that question. It has to do with four horsemen of the apocalypse, Big Ben, and 9 a.m. Actually, just two of the horsemen of the apocalypse, the Antichrist one and I guess the black horse. I'm, I'm not sure which one the black horse is, but I'll let him describe it to you, all right? Watch this video, let me know what you think, and then I'll let you know what I think, all right? Damn it, man. Sean, tell us about the red heifers. 
Guys, I'm calling it now. The red heifers are dead. They've been sacrificed. It happened on Wednesday morning around 9 o'clock UK time. Why do I say that? Look what happened in London. You had these two horses, a black horse and a white horse. Now think of what you want, guys, all right? Biblical prophecy is quite clear. The white horse signifies the Antichrist. The black horse signifies famine. Also, Big Ben went silent at nine o'clock at the same time. I'm not, you know, guys, I, I, we won't find out until maybe a year, two years, who knows? Nobody's going to tell us right now. But that's what I'm calling it. I'm calling the red heifers where, you know, the, the sacrifice happened then. What does that mean? Those of you who've been following this channel, remember guys, we've got two channels now our other, uh, on our other platform, link in the bio, go show your support. I did a deep dive into why the UK is going to be facing food shortages. This is a global problem. So there, straight away guys, you've got the famine. Who is the Antichrist? Where are they? That's what those horses represent. Well then, first things first, I have to say that I am super excited that there are people like this on the other side of the ocean, just like in the United States. People that make little connections to, to events that happen and, and blow them way out of proportion. No, no, I'm not saying that he's wrong because he could be right. This thing happened on the Internet. He posted this on the Internet. So in my opinion, it has to be true because it's on the Internet. It is interesting, though, the weird stuff that is happening on a daily basis. I do have to say that the connections that he made, my conspiratorial brain liked them. They were making connections. I'm like, those are good points. He's making perfect points here, dude. I liked them. Is it true? What does it matter? We're in the end times here, guys. There's weird shit happening on a daily basis. We got another anomaly off the coast of Antarctica. What the shit is that about? And this thing ain't a freaking glitch. Something's going on down in Antarctica, and it ain't the flowers that are blooming. Damn it, man. I actually forgot about the red heifers, to be honest with you. I was wondering what was happening, and I just completely went way over the head. So they've been sacrificed, or is that just the theory? Hold on, let me do a little research. I'll be right back. Oh, well, I actually think it may have. It says that the first successful red heifer sacrifice will take place in spring of 2024. And we're pretty much there, so I can't believe I let that one slip past me. And honestly, I'm really surprised that more people have not been talking about it. If you guys heard anything about this, let me know, because I am interested in the red heifer, but I'm not really finding much information beyond this. Ron Selak, he was the unlucky person ever, went through it. <laughs> in January 1962, he was on a train and it derailed into an icy river. And this one cart that he was on sunk. 17 of the passenger passengers died. He was able to break out, swim to shore with a broken arm and hyperthermia. Four years later, while on a transport bus, the bus skidded off the road, went into an icy river, <gasps> sank to the bottom. They oh moved south, bud. But then in 1970, yeah. driving his car, he he had an engine failure, which ignited his fuel tank. The whole car caught on fire, and he was able to get out before the car exploded. And then the same exact thing happened a few years later to his new car, mm. but this time his hair was singed off. And then in 1995, he was hit by a city bus, and then when he went into the road, he was hit by a truck. Still lived. What, what? in the world? Yeah. <laughs> Two days after his 73rd birthday, Fran won the lottery for $1.1 million. What? But then he died the next day, didn't he? It didn't happen. <laughs> that, would make him, that would make him the unluckiest person person right there but yeah that's as that far is, as i got in his life that is crazy wow. yeah with the advancements of technologies it's becoming harder and harder to hide things well google earth has done it again it's found a weird well, object structure monolith in the middle of nevada's desert this thing is located northwest of las vegas but what it is exactly we have no idea the structure seems to be about 50 feet tall. It's just weird. And as I pan, I pan out reviewing the area, there's lines in the ground that it almost reminds me of the Nazca lines. But again, what is this? Who put it there? What's going on? Take a look at this. Look at the coordinates yourself. Tell me what you think.
It honestly kind of looks like the moon a little bit. Definitely would be curious. Maybe it's a place where they do blast testing. I, I really don't know. If any of you guys have any ideas, leave a comment letting me know because I am clueless. I don't know if y'all have heard this or not, but there's a theory now that states that Africa is pretty much within driving distance of Arizona, the Grand Canyon. Yes, you heard me right. And when I heard this, I was like, what? There's no way. But the more I research it, I'm like, hmm, so let's get into it. This is the Pangea map. And this is a map of the world pre-continental drift, which basically shows us that Africa is right next door to North America. So would it be that far off to think that there's a highway to Africa from Arizona? I don't know. Let's look at this. We have been lied to. WTF bruh. Oh, there's more. Shit, the grand kid, bruh. That shit. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole civilization living under you. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's definitely interesting. I have never heard of this theory before, and I'm not quite sure if I get what they're saying. Are, are they saying that there is a teleportation device in the Grand Canyon that allows you to teleport to Africa? Or are they saying that there's literally a tunnel in the Grand Canyon l leading to Africa? Because, dang, that's a long walk. Look at what this lady caught over her house, y'all. Look at what this lady caught over her house. The skies are so active, y'all. I guess these are these are rockets, and then there's some UFO ships that following these rockets in order to defuse them, y'all. Check this out. Look this. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! It's right over my house. Why isn't the sirens going off? Yeah, Josh, why aren't the sirens going off? Going sirens. All those are there. Babe, hey, why isn't the siren going off? Because they're not falling here? Look at the UFOs, boy. Going after them rockets. They're chasing them. Yeah. Oh my god, oh my god. That shit crazy. Look at that, yo. What is going on? They're trying to leave the Earth? Bro, y'all see them boys came out of nowhere. Look at that. Look, they it just they just camouflage out of the sky, y'all. Y'all see that? They just camouflage out of the sky. They came out of nowhere. And they're going after these missiles, bro. Oh, damn, bro. Yo, it's up and it's stuck. We're not even five months into 2024, and we have had more action than anything that's entertaining on television right now, y'all. Everything is happening in the sky and in the world right now. What a time to be alive, y'all. What is going on with y'all? Y'all see what's going on in the world? Y'all see it, right? Let me know what you guys think about this video. This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I am only raising awareness to interesting situations during this interesting time. It just makes me wonder, maybe this was some kind of military test and they were testing new equipment. But if that's the case, why would they do it so close to the public, you know? I really would like to know what this was exactly because I got nothing. And there's really nobody in the comments of this video talking about it either. There is a lot of people saying that it's just spiritual warfare. So I'm at a loss on this one. When you go to CERN, right outside the front door is this gigantic picture of this Indian god that is standing inside of a portal. It was a the tour to let people come in and look around. And as one person was looking around, they saw these gigantic clear panels leaning up against the side of a part of the machine with these hieroglyphs on them. Nobody can decipher these hieroglyphs. Nobody knows what in the world these are, what they mean, where they came from, who wrote them. What writing, what ancient culture are they linked to? Nobody knows. CERN is the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider. They send atoms in opposite directions and speed them up to the percentage of the speed of light and then let them collide. And then they analyze the collision. But something else they discover in this, in the process is that they create microscopic black holes. I think, in my opinion, part of the work going on at CERN is to learn how to create stable wormholes. Einstein Rosenbridge, I believe they're talking about the Stargate. Now, I knew about the statue in front of CERN. I did not know about the glass panels that had hieroglyphs on them. That's really interesting. And it makes me wonder, what what is that exactly? I know that there's a lot of we'll call them nerds in the science field that have their power because they're extremely wealthy. 
and they probably like to throw Easter eggs and other hidden messages because they think it looks cool in their business. But it just makes me wonder if that's the case or is there like some kind of ancient technology that they're manipulating because they, they know something that we do not, you know? Well, that's a new one to me. I did not know that they had that inside their building. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you enjoyed any of these clips, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.